Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I wanna to show you one of my favorite techniques in Python, something known as dispatch tables. So let's talk about this. But in order to understand where dispatch tables come from and why we would wanna use them, we need to back up a little bit and start off with two really, really simple functions. So I'm gonna say here, def a, I'm gonna say return a, should just say a, and then I'll say def b, return b. So far so good, I've got these two different functions. And now I want to allow the user to choose which function should run. Well, how am I gonna do that? Easy ways to do a while true loop. So I'm gonna say here s equals input, enter a function name, and I'll say here dot strip, and I'll say if not s, then break. So basically if we get an empty string, then get out of the loop. Otherwise, I'm gonna say if s equals equals a, then print a, elif s equals equals b, print b, else we'll say print, we'll say here like s uh, is not a known function. So what's gonna happen here? Well, we're gonna get input from the user and if it's not an empty string, we're gonna check, is it A? Oh, it's A, great. We will run the A function and print its output. Oh, we get B, we're gonna take the, run the B function gets output. So I'm gonna say here, oops, it would help if I actually ended the parentheses there. And so if I now say A, there we go, we got A. I say B, we get B. I say C, it says C is not a known function. I press enter and we're done. And this makes sense, right? Because I'm getting input from the user and I'm using that input to decide which function will run. But you can probably see that there's some issues with this approach to things, right? What happens if I have a new function, function C? Then I've gotta go into this while loop and add a new clause, what if the person enters C? What if I wanna give more than one possible name to a function, right? More than one possible input should run the same function. It just goes on and on and on. And so there's kind of a, a disconnect here between the input that the user is going to enter to get a function to run and the function that we're running. All that logic is inside of the while loop here. And that's not bad, but it could be better. So enter a dispatch table. And this is a, a fancy term for what we in Python would just call a dictionary. Well, it's not exactly just a dictionary. It's a dictionary in which strings are the keys. Okay, so far that's pretty usual. And functions are the values. Not the result of invoking a function, but rather the function, the function object. In Python, functions are first class objects. That means they are nouns, not just verbs. And so when I invoke a function, if I say a parentheses, that means I wanna call the function. But if I just say a, that means I want the function object. I want the function that we defined without actually executing it. You can call it a reference to a function. And then later on, if we want to execute it, we can just add parentheses. So I'm gonna say here, funks equals a colon a and b colon b. This is a dictionary in which a and b, the strings are keys and a and b, the functions are values. So if I want to, I could say funks square brackets a, what is that gonna give me? The function a, but it returns the function a, it does not actually run it. How can I run that function a? Well, I can use parentheses, of course, and now I get back a. So you can see that I can store these functions in the dictionary, and then I can retrieve one of the functions using a string. And I assume you now see where I'm going with this. I'm gonna say now while true, and once again, I'm gonna say s equals input, enter a function name, strip. And then I'm gonna say here, once again, if not s, then break. And then comes the fun part. Now I can say if s in funks, meaning if the user's input, let me just scroll up a little bit here, if the user's input string is a key in our funks dict, then I'm gonna say print of what? Funks, that's our dictionary, s parentheses, right? So I'm grabbing the function, I'm executing the function, I'm printing its output. Else I can say print, say s is, is not a known function. And this is so, well, once again, I didn't close the parentheses. What is with me today? And so if I say here A and B and C and enter, and it works exactly the same way. But my code is now shorter, cleaner, and it doesn't depend 
on modifying the while loop. All I have to do is modify my dictionary where we make that connection between the function names and the function bodies. And if I want to have more than one letter execute the same function, I can easily do that. I just add another key value pair to this. Now, there are some things missing from what we might want to do with a dispatch table. For example, what if our function takes one or more arguments? Then we'll need to pass those in. But for a simple, simple example of dispatch tables, it doesn't get much better than this. And the reason it's called a dispatch table is that we are deciding which function, what functionality we are going to dispatch based on a certain input. Um, and these do exist in other programming languages, but it's pretty rare for it to be as simple and I should say as widespread as this. So if you have a whole lot of if, elif, 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 else sorts of pieces of your code, and all you're doing is you're choosing which function you want to execute, or I should say, choosing which class you want to get an instance of, definitely look into a dispatch table. This is a fantastic technique that I really like, and I've heard from my students in the past that this is one of the most practical things they've learned from my courses. All right, I hope this was helpful and useful. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you use dispatch tables. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll be back soon with lots more videos about Python, pandas, and everything in between.